Welcome to DOS Geek. I love technology. If you're a subscriber to this channel, you love technology as well. A big part of this channel itself founded in me getting new technology, geeking out over it and sharing it with you. And a big part of you being part of the community is sharing all the tech geekery and gadgets that you have that you share back with me and the rest of the community. I also host the Hardware Addicts podcast, which is an amazing podcast where we deep dive into all the cool tech that's coming out there. So a lot of things I do revolve around this awesome stuff, this hardware that we get our hands on and play with and explore and learn new things with. However, I've been completely blind to an issue that supersedes all politics. So please do not talk about your gang affiliation in my comments, Republican, Democrat, or make this political because this supersedes all of that nonsense. And this is about humans. This is just about the human condition. There's an issue taking place in the technology realm that in, in my recent research, I've been ignorant to this, to the degree at which it's happening, has been quite shocking. This practice is still going on right now at a large scale, and they're using slave or forced labor to produce these very expensive items that you and I are purchasing from well-known companies that are worth billions, in some cases trillions of dollars, who spend a lot of their time marketing and talking about being these ethical companies and putting this posturing out into the public only to find out in fact, they have a lot of skeletons in their closet. And that's the type of stuff that we're going to get into in this video. Now, I know what you're thinking. I don't want to get on YouTube. I'm, I'm thinking Das Geek was going to do some happy story about a new laptop he's got or something. That's still coming. But I could tell you my purchasing habits have changed since I've started researching this. We're going to still have that. And I know it's going to be better to put you back in the matrix, kind of like, what was it, Regan, who wanted to, you know, when he was talking to Agent Smith, wanted to go back to eating a steak and the juicy steak in the matrix, even though he knew it was fake. That's what this moment for you is going to be like. It's much easier to just turn this video off and ignore that these type of things happen. But for me, it was important to understand this. I'm going to share all of my research with you. You're going to have access to it all. And I hope that you will come and join me as I kind of unravel this puzzle because I don't feel like I have it fully unraveled, even with all the research that we're going to cover here but I think it's going to be really, really interesting. And we're going to have good news too. We're going to talk about the companies that are doing things right and the companies you should be buying your products from. So this is not the video that I even wanted to do. It's the video that I need to do. I think it's important as somebody who speaks about technology and hardware. So I need all of you to get your big boy pants on. This is going to be controversial. Let's dive right in into what the tech companies wish we didn't know. Obviously, this research is done online. There was many sources that I could grab that looked reputable and felt reputable. There are a lot of companies out there as I was doing research that create so-called ethical research on companies' supply chains and they came to different conclusions than other companies that I found. So what I was looking for is companies that seem to have a clear benchmark of how they performed their ethical ratings. For instance, some of these research companies would just simply say, we le we're looking or rating companies based on, do they have statements about having an ethical supply chain? And if they had that, then they were rated really well. There were other companies that went into multiple factors to determine whether a company had an ethical supply chain, including having those statements. But just having statements alone, as you know, doesn't carry a lot of weight. Let me give you an example of a company that has a very clear benchmarking process that's documented on their site. So this company is called Know The Chain, and this is their benchmark methodology that they've utilized. And you can see it's having a commitment statement, right, to address things like human trafficking and forced labor, supply chain standards that they require for the workers, and having easily accessible information and communication between the company and its suppliers, management and accountability, training, stakeholder engagement, traceability, risk ass assessment, purchasing practices, and the list goes on. So they're benchmarking 
all of these factors together, which is why we're going to focus pretty heavily on some of these elements from a company known as Know the Chain, because they have a very clear way of distinguishing a company being truly ethical versus just stating that their supply chain is ethical and doesn't include things like forced labor and other items. When we talk about forced labor, it's important to realize how big this issue is. This extends far outside of simply just technology. This includes things like the clothing that you wear. This includes things like the food supply chain. In this video, I'm focusing on tech. However, as you go down this rabbit hole, hopefully doing your own research and coming to your own conclusions on not only just what I present here, but kind of understanding this issue as a whole, you're gonna see that it's quite a big problem. According to the International Labor Organization, at any given time in 2016, an estimated 40.3 million people are in modern slavery, including 24.9 million in forced labor, which we're focusing on that 24.9 million, and then of that, the ones that are affected in the tech world, and 15.4 million people in things like forced marriages and stuff along those lines. I'm focusing on that forced labor, slave labor, that we're gonna get into with these companies. Now, these issues can range from something as simple as the camera that's included in your phone, so it doesn't have to be necessarily the entire device itself. It could be CPU, screens, or other components. It could be rare earth minerals that get used in things like batteries, where this type of child labor, forced labor, slave labor thing comes in. These human right violations or issues are directly or indirectly known by the companies. Now, it seems like, seems like that some of these companies try to remove themselves from the supply chain. They have a middleman company that they go through and they say, well, as far as we know, we have standards. We put in documentation that says we want to ethically source this stuff. And what those companies do when they source it out to their companies, well, I can't control that. And that may be more reasonable if we're not talking about companies worth billions or trillions of dollars that absolutely have the responsibility, the capability of making sure that the products that they source are from slave-free, forced labor-free supply chains. Now, when we think about companies that present themselves as a socially aware and ethically sound company, Apple may come to mind. I'm not quite sure, maybe marketing, some other things of how they've gathered this entire reputation, but they have it. And again, this isn't gonna be a hit piece on Apple alone, because you're gonna see this goes far past Apple. But Apple's interesting because they're doing some things that are, well, allegedly doing some things, I should say, that are very controversial that make me put them at the beginning of this list. And we'll get into that in a second. The Washington Post just did a recent article talking about new documents show Lens Technology, which is the company which makes iPhone glass and is owned by China's richest woman, received these Muslim labors transferred from Xinjiang, which, as I understand, is a predominantly Muslim area. One of the oldest and most well-known iPhone suppliers has been accused of using forced Muslim labor in its factories, according to documents uncovered by a human rights group. Now, of course, there have been recent events in which the government was kind of drilling a couple companies. Following recent reports that at least 80 global companies that sell on the Amazon marketplace, including Nike, Starbucks, and Samsung, have ties to Chinese factories that use enslaved Uyghur Muslims. Will you certify here today that your company does not use and will never use slave labor? Forced labor is abhorrent, and we would not tolerate it in Apple. And so I would love to get with your office and engage on the legislation. Cook was one of those individuals who said if they ever find a supplier that's utilizing something like forced or slave labor, and I'm completely going off the top of my head here, but you can go find it out there on YouTube and said that they would cut off any vendor that they found did this. They obviously have documents and things, strong stances against this stuff. But again, it's a $2 trillion company. Can we really excuse that it exists at all, that it's not tracked entirely? That's what's concerning. But there's more to the Apple story we'll get into here. Now, it says Lens Technology is one of at least five companies connected to Apple's supply chain that have now been linked to alleged forced labor from the Xinjiang region, according to human rights groups. So the keyword here is alleged. And of course, this is coming from the Washington Post. 
But if you've been doing any research on Apple over the years, you know they've made the news from the Foxconn controversies and things that are out there. So we kind of have a history here, a track record but let's take a look at another example. When we talk about the past, Foxconn is one that comes up quite extensively, and I'll have links to all of this in the show notes, so you can go look at all of these sources yourself. But one of the controversies in the Wikipedia article talking about Foxconn, there's tons of news articles out there, but it says, in reaction to a spate of negative press, particularly that involving worker suicides in which 14 people died from January to May 2010. Steve Jobs defended Apple's relationship with the company in 2010, citing that Chinese partner is pretty nice and it's not a sweatshop. During this time, however, a report jointly produced by 20 universities in Hong Kong, Taiwan and mainland China described Foxconn factories as labor camps with widespread worker abuse and illegal overtime. And of course, there were suicides and other things that were linked to this specific company here as well, which is well known to be a part of the supply chain for Apple. This is the reason why Apple's getting so much attention in this specific video, because this here, this additional article from the Washington Post saying, Apple is lobbying against a bill aimed at stopping forced labor in China. Apple wants to water down key provisions of the bill, which would hold U.S. companies accountable for using this forced labor, according to two congressional staffers here. Forced labor is abhorrent. And this, to me, was the reason, out of everything else, that Apple wanted to cover first and foremost, because lobbying against, again, if this is true, against a bill about stopping these type of activities or trying to water it down, if this company truly has the ethical stance that they've marketed themselves as having, wouldn't exist. This bothers me probably more than anything else that we're going to cover in here. Not only are there seemingly known issues throughout the years with this supply chain, but potentially this company is working to make sure that this type of stuff continues, or at least doing as much as they can to interrupt the potential changes in, in the laws to keep this illegal activity from happening. Now, this article goes on to say that Apple's lobbying firm, Fierce Government Relations, disclosed it was lobbying on the bill on behalf of Apple in a disclosure form that was first reported by the information. And of course, here's the detention facility that we're kind of talking about here and watching it being built out over the years, as I'm sure this has been very fruitful for the companies who are utilizing this labor. Imagine how inexpensive it is to source your materials from slave or forced labor. But remember I said there's more companies involved in this and it's very difficult to unravel this puzzle of how deeply this goes with certain companies. I think Apple, there's kind of this clear history here that it sure seems like if you follow all the facts that Apple has a problem here, they failed to address. But you can see in this one, Apple among companies sued over brutal child labor back in 2019. Apple, Google, Dell, Microsoft, and Tesla were also named in this lawsuit, alleging the exploitation of underage labor in the Democratic Republic of Congo. But I'm going to show you something that is, to me, the most shocking part probably of this video. We're going to look at Know the Chain which we talked about the way that they measure these benchmarks. And we're going to look at these companies and how they're scored in this next part of the video. So you can see we're on Know the Chain 2020-2021 benchmark. I think it's important to note that we should be following this type of, if you find a specific site, in this case for me, it's Know the Chain, that you trust, you like the rating system. This is something we should continually follow up on. We don't want to, in my opinion, just say, okay, well, this company is good today, but two years from now, we find out that they've changed their practices and now include forced or slave labor, or on the opposite, that these companies have done a massive turnaround to change, because really that's what I hope this video drives more than anything else, is that these companies change. They see that the public is aware, we know what they're doing, and we want it to stop and it needs to stop and they have the resources to make it stop. So if we look here at the companies and their ranking and score, you can see that overall it's pretty pitiful that the best company here, HP, 
has a score of 70 and not 100. But we have to give mad props to HP here because throughout all of the sites that seem to rank ethical companies and companies that have an ethical supply chain, HP seems to be the company that's always there on those sites listed. So HP has clearly done a ton of work here to try to clean up their supply chain as much as possible. And that I think is very, very impressive and why going forward, and in fact, I have two of them now, I have some amazing HP laptops that I can't wait to show you after this video. Next on this list is Samsung Electronics at 69, Apple at 68. How does Apple get here? But we also covered all those other things. So to me, Apple seems to have this kind of dual rule here. We've got this long history of violations, but we also have a history of Apple doing work to try to clean some of this up. I would have to assume that's how they got this score. I don't know. And then we also have Apple lobbying, allegedly, against bills about this slave labor. So I would love to know from Know the Chain themselves how Apple scored a 68 here, knowing all of their qualifications. But to me, I wouldn't put personally until Apple is able to clearly define that, that all of these alleged accusations from all of these news sites across from the internet are in fact completely incorrect, I would not put Apple on this list personally. Now, Intel is another company that shows up quite consistently in having an ethical source, and I think a lot of their products are built here in the United States, fabricated here in the United States, so it kind of makes sense. You can see Tesco, and Dell, it starts to drop tremendously from Intel down to 63, Microsoft down here at 59, and then it just gets worse and worse. You can see Walmart, Best Buy, Coca-Cola company, all in the 50s. And then when we get down here to finally a cell phone company, Nokia at 45, Amazon down at 43, and it keeps getting worse. Qualcomm at 36, Sony at 36. Really surprised to see Sony listed here so low. Some people, when I told them, were like, weren't surprised, but I was. NVIDIA being at 31, that was pretty shocking for me. Now, AMD was not listed in any of these sites. I would love to see somebody do AMD and understand their supply chain as well. I'm a big AMD fan, but if they come in here and it's shooting in the 30s or even below NVIDIA, that's going to change real quick. And we've got Costco, Hitachi, um, down here in the 20s, it gets worse and worse. You've got, of course, a bunch of different industries here represented. Western Digital Canon at 14. That's just pathetic. Panasonic here at 13. Then we've got Kyocera at 10. Tyson Foods at 9. I mean, it's just, I know all these aren't tech companies, but to me, really, really shocking. Nintendo was probably the most shocking of all. Another company presents itself as a very pure company that, you know, cares about kids, cares about uh, making sure families get together and just has this very clean reputation coming in here at a 23 with all of the money that's been made on the switch and other things coming in at a 23. That that's pretty pathetic. Now, I know a lot of people in the community like Lenovo laptops. I like Lenovo laptops. I've purchased plenty of them. Uh, they weren't showing like AMD in these specific ratings here as a company. However, in doing some basic research, and I say basic research online, I was able to find articles like this one from 2020. It says U.S. blocks imports from Chinese laptop maker tied to Lenovo and to Google here, again, using that same Muslim minority in China as forced labor there. So that's interesting to me. They're not rated on these lists. Again, I would love to see Lenovo added to that list. And this talks about, this will be in the show notes, really what the problem is in this region, how they're, these companies, Apple, BMW, Gap, Huawei, Nike, Samsung, Sony, and Volkswagen uh, are utilizing, these brands are utilizing this forced labor here. Um, reports that 80,000 of these people were transferred out to work in factories in China between 2017 and 2019. And they have some information here from the ASPI.org. This is Australian Strategic Policy Institute. I thought this article is really interesting. Uh, if I was to go over it in a video, it wouldn't come across well. It's something you definitely just need to go out there and read. And then I just did a Lenovo child labor search here because again, Lenovo comes up quite a bit. 
and you can kind of see all of these articles here that are listed out questions about Lenovo's forced labor usage, certain tech giants, Lenovo being named in them, of course, with Apple, Samsung, and others in these cases. So I think Lenovo has some work to do here just based on what I'm seeing there. There's another organization I want to highlight here called End Slavery Now, and they have a whole ranking or PDF of companies that's a slave-free guide, as they call it, and they have everything from food and chocolate and wine all the way into tech companies here. And you can see that they have the best, better, and good. And under good, Intel, again, makes the case. Nokia here and Hewlett-Packard. Hewlett-Packard, again, you're going to see time and time again make it on all of these lists here. Under best, there are currently no certified fair trade or slave-free electronic products in the market. However, several companies are part of a conflict-free sourcing groups and initiatives, and those are those companies listed there. None of those are brands I'm aware of to purchase directly from in the United States, but yet they're, they're listed there. And of course, for the phone, you've got the Fair phone there, which is pretty interesting. Had me looking deeply into that company because they're listed a lot from other companies that seem to rate this supply chain as a really good company to get your phone from. Finally, I present to you the guide.ethical.org.au, and you can see here uh, in this guide, conflict-free minerals, labor exploitation, and things that they're rating on here. Nokia doesn't have a rating, interestingly enough, but they're up here with the Fairphone, which gets an A. You see the iPhone is rated as a C, the Google Pixel is a D, Alcatel is a D, Blackberry is a D, and then everyone else, including Samsung here, with Fs on their phone. So a lot of these phones, maybe from the batteries themselves, that seems like a big issue in the phone industry, having some issues here with their ethical supply. There's one more statement that was in Know the Chain. It said it researched 100 companies and only one company, HP, said in its statement that it requires direct employment in its supply chains, thereby eliminating the risk of exploitation of migrant workers by employment agencies. So that to me is very interesting. If you can see the theme here, one of the companies I definitely am going to buy more from because of reading this is HP. And so I will be showing you again, like I said, some new HP laptops. So I've created a living, breathing document out there on HackMD. It'll be on doskeetcommunity.com. You can link to it. Uh, you can contribute to this document if you like. I would like this to be a research document because I know my research is not 100% complete. It doesn't even look like half the news agency's research is 100% complete. But I know that a lot of you have other sources and information that you can add to this so we can continue to learn and track these companies and follow them. Yes, it should shame companies to be on this list, but my goal ultimately is for them to get off of these lists and to improve that supply chain and really make the tech industry not be so embarrassed by things like this. And we should be embarrassed. And I ignorantly never looked into these issues before. Knowing and seeing these types of news stories pop up once in a while, I wanted to stay, I guess, in the back of my head in the matrix and think that these issues were getting resolved. But here we are in 2021, and these issues don't seem to be getting resolved very well at all, in fact. At the end of the day, I really hope this video makes you think twice about the companies that you go out there and spend your hard earned money on. Based on that living, breathing document, here are the companies as I've ranked them today as companies that I would do business with. HP, obviously, consistently ranking at the top. Intel, Nokia, and Fairphone were names that I heard over and over again in these reports. Companies that had some ethical supply chain controls that also showed up in enough of these that I think I would do business with. Maybe not first. If I found something from HP, Intel, Nokia, Fairphone, I would go there first. But Dell, Microsoft, and Samsung. Yes, Samsung, even though it was way low on some of the lists, especially with the phones, also was much higher in other lists. So they're kind of that maybe area uh, I think they definitely can do some improvement. All of these companies can do some improvement here. And companies with products you should probably avoid. I have the Google Pixel, of course. Lenovo, I think, needs to do some work in cleaning up some of these stories that are out there, if they're just stories, and making sure they have a clear supply chain ethics and guidance council that's working on these issues behind the scenes. HTC, Sony, LG, Huawei, and Apple. 
Now, the reason why Apple I put in the list of the list of things that you should avoid is again, because while some companies seem to score them higher and they technically would belong in the some ethical supply chains, I rank them here due to the lobbying that is happening against the China forced labor. Again, I don't have any way other than the report that the Washington Post had that they sent in there to prove that that happened, that they purchased this lobbying thing, but it seems like if they're going to go out there and Washington Post is going to make that statement and it's completely false that Apple would do some work to make sure that was immediately corrected on file. So because of the lobbying against this or trying to weaken this bill, that is why I put Apple as companies you should probably avoid. I know this wasn't the most fun video in the world, but I hoped you learned something. I hope you'll contribute to me learning more about this subject because it bothers me. It bugs me to my core that I've purchased so many of these companies' products and never thought about the supply chain going on behind the scenes. I hope it bothers you too. This channel is about the pursuit of knowledge, learning, becoming smarter, being passionate about what we geek out on with others. Sometimes it's easier just to go on without understanding where things are sourced from and just take companies at their word, the stances that they've take, taken in the past. However, I've learned an unfortunate lesson that standards of human rights are often determined by us, the consumer, and the ethical moral lines that we draw in the, line, in the sand to say, you can't cross this or we're just simply not going to spend our money with your company. I hope that you enjoyed this. Leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's a particular organization that you find that's doing some amazing things to try to stop this practice because I would like to do some donations from this channel to them. I appreciate all the love and support from my amazing patrons out there. And until next time, get out there and fill your brains. Don't forget to stop. Right. Yeah, that comes up if you like this video.